Good morning, children. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. People there on YouTube and also on our app, Goshalites app. Very unfortunate thing is that after a few days, the YouTube classes are now going to get over. So the college has taken a decision that uh, further classes will be only on the application. I think uh, uh, the theme, three more days now, three more days classes will continue in YouTube. After that, the class will continue as it is, but only in Gosha, on Gosha Lights app. So let us now continue. You have written two tests, I think. And tell me your feedback of the test. Any doubt you have, uh, you have written the one, both 180 scored very good. Very good, you scored both 180. Who is this? Suhas, very good Suhas. Priyanka, how much you scored in the weekend one? Weekend, first you just tell me the weekend or yeah. You can give do like this, okay? So weekend and comma uh, unit. Weekend test and unit test like that. So weekend test and unit test, comma laga ke bata do. Yes, Priyanka, it is good. Little less in the unit test. Okay, uh, okay, good, good, Gayatri. Okay, the unit is better. Very good, Varshini. Okay, good. Some people have done either good in one, I mean, some people have done good in both. And uh, Cherishma, 670, I think you are telling your complete marks. Okay, my point is Cherishma, my question is, you have taken two tests, right? So one is a weekend test and one is a unit test. So you have to tell me the marks of both the tests. Like this. Aditya, good, 160 and 175, very good. Good, unit test, very good, Vaishnavi, good marks in unit test. Okay, some people have done better in unit test. In none of the paper, uh, we find any claim. If there are any claim in the paper, you can tell me, but we did not find any claim in any of the papers. In none of the paper claims are there. Unit test 180, Karishma. Very good, very good. And uh, Charishma, how many uh, in the weekend test? Weekend test. Very good. So not many have given their marks, but uh, make your marks so that you can, you can be willing to tell your teachers about your performance. Okay, and this is not a big deal because we know from where the papers are coming. It is only we have to sit with a pledge in the heart that if it is from NCRT, if I have heard about it and our teachers have ever said my concentration is so good that if ever I have read this line, I will not make a mistake or at best one mistake, but not more than that. If you just sit with a pledge Forget about your old marks, whatever you are scoring so far, you have to forget your past. Now, some people uh, cannot see, they cannot visualize marks such as 180 or 670, 680, like that type of marks. It is better you write on some place in your book, in your room or on your book, some place you write your marks. You can just affirm that your name complete name, you are son of, and then your marks. For example, 680 out of 720, whatever the marks are, whatever the marks. Now, try to achieve that. And yes, raise your bar. Because suppose if you are thinking this, this is today, maybe after some, some days of training, your bar can be raised. So raise your bar. Raise your bar if you are... so. Unless you have a visualization of your marks, it is difficult because again and again, the mind will try to, you know, there is one uh, very good thing 
happens, you know. So uh, one of my seniors, and uh, he has scored uh, 944 out of 1200 in the final examination. That is the final MBBS examination. And that time it was a com comprehensive one. All 16 subjects are there in one, one, uh, one examination. And because they were, I, I was a base scholar in Ajmer, uh, he called me to collect from the college. So I collected his mark sheet. And then he has went to Jaipur and preparing for other examination. But I have for a long time, I have his mark sheet. Mark sheet. And his mark sheet was decent. Like moreover, in final MBBS, getting pass is something a victory of getting pass in one step is a victory. No one think of anything else than getting pass. If you are pass, obviously you are big shot. So I was just seeing these marks. I used to like that. And you know, when my mark sheet came exactly matching 944, exactly matching. So then I realized the importance of uh, visualization and uh, power of attraction you know my mind attracted that 944 sometimes you are not able to attract suppose if you have seen lot of time 120 130 120 110 our mind is again attracting that 110 only so you have to raise your bar and try to uh, you know it may look like very uh, funny suppose today your marks are 320 today you are getting 320 and you write 680. Now, there is no harm in that. But the harm is your mind will not accept it. So first of all, write your realistic goal. You can write short-term goal that uh, after one month, there will be four tests. And in these four tests, I will increase 10, 10 marks in all the four subjects that will raise my marks as 40 from 320 to 360 like that or 380 or even 400 after one and a half month i'll touch 400 so you can write 400 and then you can give a date and then you start working on it now even then also it seems to be uh, funny to your mind so only when you are working little extra than what you are doing suppose yesterday also i worked casually today also i work i'm i'm a good student i'm, I'm a good person I don't go out. I don't uh, talk on phone much. I work. But if yesterday and today are same, the mind will not accept that as something which can happen. So you have to be giving your extra. Move an extra mile. Give something extra than yesterday. And when you start giving extra, extra daily, slowly and slowly, your mind will accepting that as truth. And the day your mind accepted the marks, that marks will come on paper. We manifest our marks. It may look very weird to most of you out there. But let me tell you, at this age, I have more experience of life. And I have more experience of uh, happenings in life. Success. So I'm telling you, success, failure, both. I'm telling you that uh, we attract, we manifest our surroundings. If you are scoring 320, you are manifesting that. If you are scoring 680, you are manifesting that. It is you who has manifested. Okay. So we are manifesting that. Whatever you have in your life, you are manifesting. Believe me. Believe me. These are not the motivational words. Believe me. If ever we have this chance to meet personally, I can show you my diaries, my journals. So very long back, I have uh, attended one seminar. And uh, that seminar was uh, from this person, uh, this Indian only. Uh, his very name, um, Khar, the Khare, Khare, Ashish Khare, Khare. OK? And uh, so he, that he has written many books. You can win. What is his name? I attended his seminar through college side. And he has given one small journal. And there were pages and written uh, things were there. Shiv Khare, good. Yeah, Shiv Khare. And uh, Shiv Khera, sorry. Shiv Khera, I'm sorry. Then, you know, he said, okay, write. What you want to accept after two years, write there. 
what you will be after two years right there and then there are pages there okay what you will be after five years right how you want to die right here what people should talk about you when you die when you are no more what the people should talk about you there is a page for that also well we don't have experience of death but certainly well, we have experience of two years five years exactly the life is moving the same way exactly i cannot write that after two years someone who has already dead he can uh, uh, again become alive because then the mind will think it is false i cannot say if i have lost one uh, one arm or one uh, one ability in an accident so that can come back because it is against now it is against the law of medicine medical sciences i cannot write but apart from that whatever i have write what my mind can conceive i am having the same around me i swear so even from my life i can show those journals to you there are dates there and you can see yes sir your life today and what you have written uh, the, you know in that year is 99% similar you are again you are uh, i've just write that i will uh, drive one white color uh, suv i am having a white color suv but the only difference is now i don't drive but i have a people to drive that so even better than that what i have written there so what i am saying that make your destiny make, you can write your marks and then when you work over it when you work day by day maybe after 2 to 3 days only your mind will start realizing as a truth and then you will manifest that in your life this is the power of attraction many many time in life you might have also noticed i have noticed more experiences so that 944 exactly my final mbbs mark sheet i can show you that is 944 exactly exactly 944 i can even show it here uh, you know i'll I, i'll bring it one day i'll show it here exactly same 944 i cannot show that my seniors one because my senior one mark sheet i have given to him uh, one day but my mark sheet still having 944 exactly similar enough about this and uh, time to time i will be sharing these important tips to you how we can utilize them meanwhile uh, what it takes to get ai air one what it takes to get ai air one slowly and slowly improve yourself where are you standing right now from there you have to go there suppose if you are standing at uh, suppose you are standing right now at uh, here this is air1 now where are you standing right now at what pedestal you are standing and suppose a person who is standing here at let us say uh, 4 10 mark suppose the average of the last five test is 410 for him the distance is long so what he has to do he has to cross these hurdles so he has to cross some barrier 450 then slowly and slowly he can increase once it reaches 550 or so then increasing become difficult okay so like that you can reach there suppose if you are standing here for you you can reach there so you can target the next step and when you are here you can target the next step so that how we can prepare for ai ever you know ai year 1 let me tell you no one actually prepares for ai year 1 everyone prepare to get the maximum marks ai year 1 is just by chance if 715 is the highest and you got 715 then you are ai year 1 maybe it happened that you are 715 but still you do, you are not ai year 1 that algorithm that they have used all four rankers i have shown on that day all four rankers same total 715 and 1 2 3 4 so after that once you work for 715 then it all depends on the luck also but this is the way you can prepare for air 1 okay ha huh. if you are standing here and then say immediately you can go there well you require to really change the life all together which is not that easy okay which is not that easy so yes it can be i am not saying it's impossible but it's not so easy now the test you have written two test one is the weekend test and one is the unit test any question in the paper where i want you want me to explain the things 
where something else you have given and uh, a different uh, answer or different way of thinking i can help you out in anyone okay then no you might have done some mistakes but once you read that after the examination you realize it is your uh, silly mistake no props no props but you know the concept if some concept is not known then you can ask for example uh, there is a question which people are asking about innate immunity the cell which is an in innate immunity which uh, also present in areolar tissue come on areolar tissue and that also uh, it participate in innate immunity innate immunity can you answer this question name the cell of areolar tissue which provide innate immunity which help in innate immunity inborn immunity come on guys hey bhagwan no one is answering what happened yes youtube people <laughs> you cannot answer we don't have comment uh, system macrophages aditya you are right and uh, p2 your answer is sorry beta mast cell are not a uh, mast cell ek minute one once 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 one, 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 mast cell mm hmm yes he is right even mast cell also he is right even mast cells also right so that is a cell present in the areolar tissue at then that can provide the innate immunity because inflammatory barrier is also a physiological barrier however we don't teach that we only only taught innate immunity ppcc innate immunity ppcc it is physical physiological physical physiological cellular cellular cytokine physical physiological cellular cytokine in the cellular we taught that there are phagocytic cells phagocytic cells and nk cells nk cells phagocytic cells and nk cells nk cells are natural killer cells they are the lgl large granular lymphocytes they also help in uh, acquired immunity and also provide innate immunity nk cells phagocytic cells we have phagocytic cells like monocytes monocytes and also we have got the uh, neutrophils neutrophils monocytes and neutrophils neutrophils are only present in the blood but monocytes can be found in other connective tissue also like areolar tissue neutrophils are the most abundant phagocytes in the blood but monocytes they are present in the areolar areolar tissue as macrophages as macrophages as macrophages both the cells monocytes and macrophage are same but their place is different if they are in the blood they are called monocytes they are in the areolar connective tissue we call them macrophage only thing that in the blood it is circulating and in the connective tissue it does not circulate otherwise they are also a uh, large cell with irregular boundaries so my question was name the cell which is present in the areolar tissue but can provide immunity for that i can accept mast cell but for this question because already given lot of indications about the uh, macrophage probably i think the irregular margin or something like that has been mentioned there okay so do you know what pmnl or pmnl and uh, neutrophils are called pmnl just tell me what is l in pmnl i will understand you and you know the full form just tell me what is l in pmnl yes l for lymphocytes that's what i would say l for leukocytes leuco not lympho beta l for leukocyte polymorphonuclear leukocyte they are not lymphocyte beta they are the lymphocytes are a granular and uh, neutrophils are granular cells they are granular wbcs okay children so they are new uh, uh, polymorphonuclear leukocyte because of different shapes of the nuclei present here monocytes are monomorphonuclear 
but we don't uh, re refer them as monomorphonuclear. We can simply say monocytes like that. I hope you understand. Okay. So this question people are asking me. Another question people are asking that which uh, is what is providing the current of water in the spongocele or something like that. So in sponges, okay, there is a water canal system, water canal system. So in these body wall, there are canals and these canals, if I see them in a magnified way, I'll find that these canals have something inside which are uh, like these and the, they are making current of water. They are beating in such a direction that they are making current of water. They are beating and they're they letting the water flow in one direction. All these are, you know, beating. I find that they are flagella because cilia flagella have differences and these are found to be flagella. And when I see that, I found that it is actually a cell having a flagellum in more magnification. I found that this is a collar cell. It is a coenocyte or collar cell. And coenocyte has one flagellum. This is a flagellum of coenocyte flagellum. And uh, this is collar cell because this is the collar of this cell. And uh, this cell is called coenocyte or collar cell. Coenocyte, coenocyte or collar cell. These cells are characteristic cells. I'll put a hashtag for them. They are characteristic cells for sponges. So which, what is in the sponges? which is helping in meeting, making the water flow. Answer is the water current produced by the flagellar beating. And who have the flagella? The collar cells or coenocytes. Any other question which you have uh, thought and you are not having a direct answer of that, I will try to help you out. These I just remember and that's why I'm telling you. Any other? Any other in the tissues you have any doubt? No. Okay. Now, children, after this earthworm, let us now talk about this gentleman, which is called cockroach. Now, the word cockroach, we see cockroach as black or brown. So, normally they are black to brown, black or brown. Okay. But cockroaches are of various colors. They can be, there can be red cockroaches, there can be yellow cockroaches, there can be green cockroaches. That means they are of various colors. But the cockroach species that we see in our homes or uh, around us is the black and brown cockroach. These I am talking about in general because in tropical countries you have got a lot of variations. You know that they attain these colors to hide from the surrounding. For camouflage, for camouflage, colors evolved in insects. Camouflage. So therefore, in some places, their survival only depends on red color or yellow color or green color. Okay, like that. Dear children, the size is as small as uh, 0 0.6 uh, centimeter to as big as 7.6 centimeter. 0 0.6 centimeter to 7.6 centimeter. This you have to batiko to. I have also batiko to. You can also batiko to, right? So here is 0, here is 7. 6. 6 is 7.6.6 is same. Or it is one fourth of an inch and up to 3 inch. You can find them up to 3 inch. This double dot is inch. Okay? Inch. One fourth of inch to double uh, to 3 inch. This is the size range. Remember that we are talking about cockroaches in general and not for a particular species of cockroach. Cockroach are omnipresent. Omnipresent. Omni means all. That means they are present everywhere. All. Omni means all. All, every, omni. They are omnipresent. That means they are sarvatra vyapta. We use this word for God. God is omnipresent. Cockroaches are also omnipresent. They are present in all continents. Cockroaches are omnivorous. Omnivorous means they can eat all types of food. They can eat all types of food. 
They can eat all types of food. They are omnivorous. Even in overcrowded conditions, cockroaches become cannibals. You know cannibals? Who are cannibals? Cannibals means? Cannibals. In overcrowded situation, they can become cannibals. In overcrowded conditions, they can even become cannibals. Cannibals is only in situation. I'll tell you the meaning of the word cannibal, okay? Learn this word cannibal. The word is cannibal. Cannibal means animals who eat the members of the same species. Those who eat the members of the same species. Same species. If man is eating a man, he is a cannibal. If cockroach is eating a cockroach, it's a cannibal. If a snake is eating a snake, it is cannibalism. Cannibal. So cannibal is an animal. Cannibal and this phenomenon is called cannibalism. Cannibalism. Normally, cockroaches are omnivorous, but in overcrowded situation, they start eating the members of their own species. I think with this, I told you the meaning of the word cannibal. So what are cannibals? Animals who eat the members of their own species. Animals who eat the members of their own species. Okay? If a man is eating a fish, he is not a cannibal. But if a fish is eating the same fish, it's a cannibal. It is cannibalism. They are omnivorous, they are omnipresent, they are nocturnal, nocturnal, and they are also cursorial, cursorial. The meaning of cursorial means they are fast runner, they are fast runner. If it is a classroom, I could have asked you, cursorial means you, co you all could have said, but right now I can only imitate that I am asking this and you are answering. Nocturnal, they are active in the night and cursorial, adapted for fast running. They are adapted for fast running. So they are omnipresent, they are omnivorous, they are nocturnal, active in the night and they are cursorial. Some basic uh, idea about this animal cockroach. I, I hope till here some points are clear. So they belong to phylum Arthropoda, class is Insecta. Class Insecta is Hexapoda, that class Insecta. Phylum name, you know about the phylum name, I will not write it. And class name also, you know, it is the largest class, okay? And this class is also known as Hexa, Hexapoda. Hexapoda means, Hexapoda means six-legged. Hexa means six and poda means legged, six legged, good. Hexapoda, dear children, some more points about this uh, and phylum is arthropoda. Now the next page onwards, we'll be describing one particular species which we find around us, commonly around us, and that is periplaneta, periplaneta americana, americana. Periplaneta Americana. Why Americana? It is supposed to be originated from North America. It is supposed to be originated from North America. So the cockroach we find can say that I am an American. I am from America. My ancestor, my forefathers are American. And in that it is not wrong. See what happens, these cockroaches, how from America they come to India. And this is not some new thing, it's very old. They are present here. See, when goods start reaching to different continents, goods are not carried on uh, some, you know, uh, airtight packages. No, large containers are carrying, you know, large containers. If you have seen a container being carried on a vessel, you know, they are very huge, very, very large containers. Large containers are carrying the goods and they are being carried on sea route. On sea route. So what happens is that from North America, some containers contain this animal and then from there 
it reached to England. It reached to England. When England started uh, trading with us, they came as traders. So they brought goods. That time, a lot of goods used to come from England. We were not making even cycle. Even the Hercules cycle, I remember. So my uh, grandfather, my grandfather used the cycle of his father. And still, I'm, I have kept that cycle just uh, for the memory. And uh, that is the Hercules. And that was England-made cycle. It was a very heavy cycle. And right now, it, we cannot ride that. Okay, even the tires are not, they have now worn out. But the frame is there. That time, a lot of goods used to come. Even in my ancestral house, I am having a torch. A torch, a long torch. Nowadays, uh, we have got torch in this thin LED torch. But those days, a long torch with a big, heavy size. And that is also made in England because it was brought. So that was a time when a lot of goods used to come to India in large containers. And uh, in these containers, some containers contain this animal and it came to the coastal areas. Now, from the coastal areas, I mean to say port areas, I should precisely say port areas. Now, from the port areas, it is start, uh, you know, migrating to all the places, to all the uh, places. It is very, very uh, easy to survive. It has got, it can survive without water. In fact, it survives without drinking. In fact, it cannot drink. It can't drink. It cannot drink. I tell you why it cannot drink. But right now it can survive without water. It has got so many adaptations that it is a very sturdy, uh, 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 you know, machine. So therefore it can, it has migrated to different places and now surviving in all. Therefore the name Americana because it has come from origin from North America, Periplaneta Americana. Okay, guys, let us move further. Now, this species is uh, found in India. Uh, what we find in India, this is species in India. Okay, now this is species is 34 to 53. 34 to 53 uh, millimeters, millimeters long. Now, when we are describing a species, let's be very precise. 34 to 53 millimeters long, this size. Now it is somewhere 1.6 inch to about 2 inch. 1.6 inch to about 2 inch. We can have cockroach up to 3 inch. But I'm talking about when one particular species. Please learn the size of this cockroach. And uh, here remember the females. Males are longer than females. Here the males are longer. Males are longer than females. Please note down everyone. Once you note down today, you don't require them to read again. Okay. So it will be done for the neat examination. Believe me, then you don't require to do it again for this coming neat. Also remember that the body is covered by hard plates. You know that these insects have a hard exoskeleton made up of chitin. And the body is covered by hard plates. Hard plates made up of chitin. Hard plates made up of chitin. And these hard plates, these hard plates which are made up of chitin, they are known as sclerites. Sclerites. The hard plates are called sclerites. Sclerites. On the body, the different sclerites are joined by a flexible membrane. They are joined by a flexible membrane in between them. And that flexible membrane is called, anyone? That flexible membrane joining the sclerites. Flexible membrane joining the sclerites, anyone? This is called arthrodial membrane. Good. This is called arthrodial. Arthrodial. Arthrodial membrane. Arthrodial membrane. This flexible membrane is called arthrodial membrane. These are the sclerites, guys. Please remember that sclerites of the dorsal body are known as tergites. 
Tergites. Tergites means sclerites of the dorsal body and sternites. Sternites means the sclerites of the ventral side. Tergites are dorsal. Remember that tergites are dorsal and sternites are ventral. Sternites are ventral. Please learn that. Please learn. Tergites are dorsal. Sternites are ventral. Now remember that arthropoda, do you think that they are segmented? Are they segmented or unsegmented? Members of the phylum arthropoda are segmented or unsegmented? Come on. They are segmented. They are segmented. Very good. AAC, very good. AAC, Anilida, Arthropoda, Caudata. Very good. Anilida, Arthropoda and Caudata are metamerically segmented. So we can say that they are metamerically segmented. Metamerically, metamerically segmented. Metamerically segmented. The body can be divided into three body parts. We have head, head, then we have thorax, thorax, and abdomen. Head, thorax, and abdomen. Head is at right angle to the main body axis. The head is at right angle to the main body axis. This is the main body axis, this one, and the head is at right angle. And here we have a big eye here. This is a compound eye. It is a uh, sessile. It is not a stalked. It is sessile. And uh, this is a mouth is opening bottom side. Hypogonathus. And this is a, and here we have the one, two, three. This is thorax and remaining the abdomen. So abdomen start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Abdomen has got ten segments. Thorax has got three segments and head is made up of six segments. So head capsule is actually made up of six segments. Thorax is made up of three segments. One, two, three, you can see this. And abdomen is made up of 10 segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nine and 10, okay? So abdomen is made up of 10 segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, 10, 10 segments. Thorax, prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. Abdomen is, we can call them A1, A2 like that. And this is, Six. So body is divisible into head, thorax, and abdomen. And here itself, learn the number. Head is six, thorax is three, abdomen is ten. Abdomen is made up of ten segments, thorax is made up of three segments. Head is actually fused, six segments fused to form the head region. So far, all points are clear. Very simple. We have done. We are doing the phylum uh, arthropoda, member of phylum arthropoda, cockroach. They are black or brown. But different color, red, green, yellow are also present. For camouflage, these animals adapt for different colors. The size range from 0.6 centimeter to 7.6 centimeter. But the common uh, species found in India, that is phylum, uh, that is Periplanata americana, that is 34 to 53 millimeter long. Remember that one particular species we are giving very precise in mm, in millimeter. But generally, we have given the number to be in centimeter 0.6 to 7.6 centimeter until one fourth of inch to three inch they are omnipresent omnivorous nocturnal and cursorial cursorial means they are adapted for fast running the phylum is arthropoda and class is insecta also called hexapoda because they are known for six legs six uh, three pairs of walking legs again we came here then uh, in india the common species is periplaneta americana I gave you the history of Periplaneta, Periplaneta, why it is called Americana, that also I told you, Americana, because of American origin. How it came to India, that also I gave an idea about trading, how it came to India. Now it is metamerically segmented, please learn that members of the phylum Annelida Arthropoda Mollusca, Annelida Arthropoda Mollusca are metamerically segmented. Remember that the body is covered by hard plates. Scler means hard. Hard plates called sclerites. Sclerites are made up of chitin. So we can say they are chitinous. We can say they are chitinous. The sclerites are joined by articular membrane, also called arthrodial membrane. The dorsal sclerites are tergites and the ventral sclerites are sternites. The head is made up of six segments, thorax of three segments, abdomen of ten segments. The basic design of the body we have given here now we'll take one by one and uh, uh, before that i want you to see the picture you have a little idea about that 
remember that all the walking legs are attached to the thorax. So there are uh, three pairs of walking legs. So the three thoracic segment, the three pairs of walking legs are attached to the thoracic segments. Okay. And these are jointed appendages. Jointed legs are there. So three pairs of jointed legs are attached to the thoracic segments. So three thoracic segments, prothorax, then we have what? Mesothorax and metathorax. Prothorax, then mesothorax and metathorax. Okay. And with the thoracic segment, we have got the coxa. The leg is attached to thoracic segment. Also, we have got two pairs of wings. The first pair of wing is a bigger one. It is thick one. Thick, bigger and leathery. They are thick, dark, leathery. Thicker, darker and leathery. Dark brown in color. Therefore, when they are at rest, they are here. They cover the body. On the metathorax, there is another pair of wing. And this pair of wing is thin one. And uh, this one is uh, membranous, membranous and thin. And this flutter in air. So we can say this help in flight, this help in flight. Which one help in flight? Metathoracic, metathoracic, metathoracic wing, also called the hind wing, hind wing, metathoracic wing or hind wing help in flight. What this wing does, what is this wing called? This is called mesothoracic wing, mesothoracic, mesothoracic wing. It is also called, it is called mesothoracic wing or four wing. That was hind, this is four wing. Another name of four wing, anyone who can say the name of that, the name resembles the name of a girl. This is called tagmina, tagmina. It is called tagmina. So the four wing is also called tagmina. Four wing, it is only for covering the hind wing. It is only for covering the hind wing. Now, certainly it does not look like this. Certainly, I know. But this will help you to remember. So this is a prothorax. Prothorax. This is mesothorax. Mesothorax. And this is metathorax. Metathorax. Three thoracic segment, prothorax, first segment, second segment, and third segment. Legs are three pairs of with each thoracic segment, one pair of leg, but wings are only two pairs. So, therefore, the first pair of the first th uh, thoracic segment does not have the wing, and second and third have forewing and hind wing, respectively. The forewing is bigger one, darker one, thicker one. And it is only for covering the hind wing. This is only protecting the hind wing. It is only for covering, for covering the hind wing, for covering the hind wing, hind wing, so that the hind wing may not get uh, injured by anything. So it is protective, the hind wing. The hind wing or metathoracic wing, they are the flight wing. So they are helping in flight. They are the flight wing. Now, this is an important question you can think of. It's an important question. I, I hope, guys, you can learn that. Further, I'll show you the picture of a cockroach. And further uh, discussion, I'll do one by one. I'll, I'll tell you how an antenna is and all these things. But before that, you can take out the picture of your NCRT. And first, you complete that picture. Then we can continue further. So we have to first see the picture. And then only we'll further see because then it will help you to visualize. If I am not able to open, no problem, you can open and we will, I will just guide you. Thankfully, we can open this now. I'm not sure whether we are, will be open, able to open this. Oh, we opened it. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. So this picture, everyone can take out this picture, everyone. Ah, it's gone. It's gone. I knew that there is a problem here. Okay. No problem. In PC, personal computer, it is no, no more personal. It is only computer.
now the powerpoint fly, uh, file can open nicely and we can now start the presentation so we have to come on first i'll directly come to that one yeah this now please see this picture come to this picture this picture is also given in your ncrt and uh, learn the habit of taking the production of the diagram production means taking a clockwise circle and make sure that when you are moving you are reading each and every label and understanding it unless you will not move further now this will help you to study or understand the medical diagrams in medical books the diagrams are given and they are very complex diagrams in some of them even the labels are 70 to 80 labels in one complex diagram these many labels 70 80 labels or even more than that are there so it is very confusing we have to do the diagram we have to take a production then only we can say we have learned this point so let us take a production head thorax abdomen little idea four wing hind wing little idea three pair of legs and this is antenna okay yeah. now head now head is not visible nicely uh, from this because it is at right angle to the main body axis it is just going down and therefore we can say that uh, part of the <coughs> prothorax is actually hiding the head. This is tagmina. Tagmina is four wing. Hind wing is flight wing. Abdomen made up of 10 segments. Anal cerci. Anal cerci, a very important thing you can see here. Anal cerci, they are the auditory receptors. They are the auditory receptors or we can say they are the auditory organs. I can call them as auditory organs because it is made up of auditory receptors. It can sense the vibrations of the ground. I can call them as auditory, auditory organs, auditory organs. So better these are the sensory tool. It's a sensory tool for this animal there are two pairs of sensory tool one pair are the sensory tool antenna which are also called feelers antenna also called feelers and another one is anal cerci well there are other also present in the mouth parts we'll discuss about them when we do the mouth parts metathoracic leg then similarly we have mesothoracic leg and prothoracic leg so leg three segments metathorax mesothorax and uh, prothorax the dorsal tergum of prothorax is called pronotum pronotum means the dorsal dorsal tergum the dorsal tergum of prothorax of prothorax is called pronotum compound eyes one pair of compound eyes large these eyes are uh, kidney shaped these eyes are kidney shaped, kidney shaped eyes, okay, and uh, filiform, antenna are filiform, filiform means thread like, thread like, I'll ask you later on the meaning of filiform, or I will ask you the word for thread like, I will ask you the technical word for thread like, so this is we have completed the production of this diagram, we have seen all the labels, and then we start with this head part. Now, head, you, are, you cannot see from this angle. We have to see from the either front side or from the sides. You can see the head. Let us take the head separately because we have to study the head only. Let us take the head separately. Uh, we have cut the head out. The head is flexible. Uh, head is movable because it is connected through a flexible neck. It is connected through a flexible neck flexible neck you can see the compound eyes compound eyes help in vision and the type of vision present in uh, made by compound eyes is dash vision what is that vision called what is the name of the vision given by the compound eyes oscillus these are light receptors they are the light receptors only they are not for giving any image they are only sensing the light they are light sensors yes please 
Yes, you're right, mosaic image. Only three answers. Why? Yes, you're right, mosaic image. Mosaic, mosaic vision. The image is also called mosaic image, and the vision is also called mosaic vision. Okay? Then oscillus, they are light receptors. Then these are the antenna. These are antennae. Antennae are in this membranous sockets in front of eyes, membranous sockets. These are membranous, membranous sockets. All these words are also mentioned in the textbook. Membranous sockets in front of the eyes. Mandible, mandible, which is also for chewing. It is for biting and chewing. Biting and chewing. Mandible for biting and chewing. Labrum is upper lip. Labrum is upper lip. Then labium is lower lip. Lower lip. Lower lip. Maxilla, it is also jaw. So there are two pairs of jaws, mandible and maxilla paired. Mandible, maxilla paired. Labrum, labium, single. Labrum, labium, single. Just open the mouth, you can see a flexible tongue here, and that tongue is called hypopharynx. Tongue is called hypopharynx. These type of mouth parts, any idea what these type of mouth parts are? Dash and dash type. The mouth parts in this animal, the mouth parts, mouth parts are dash and dash type. And this is an important question, guys. Mouth parts, an important question. Come on. What and what type? Yes, you're right. <laughs> BC type. Okay, I take that. Biting and chewing type. I take that. No problem. Yes, biting and chewing type. Fine. I'll write BC here. Biting and chewing type. Check it. So there is an upper lip, labrum, labium, labrum, la upper lip, labium, lower lip, labrum, labium, labium is bigger. Then mandible, maxilla, paired, paired mandible, paired maxilla, paired mandible, paired maxilla, mandible, maxilla, mandible, maxilla, labrum, labium, mandible, maxilla. You can also try to visualize by two hands, okay? Labrum, labium, then two hand, mandible. Maxilla, so that you remember they are paired and one tongue hypopharynx, hypopharynx, mandible, ma uh, labrum, labium, mandible, maxilla, hypopharynx, labrum, labium, mandible, maxilla, and hypopharynx. Hypopharynx is equivalent to tongue, tongue, labrum is upper lip upper lip and labium is lower lip lower lip anything can be a question in this diagram what you notice are in the mandible there are two type of uh, in the mandible you can notice two regions one is uh, this one pointed one you can see pointed one one is pointed and the other one is a little blunt the other are blunt, pointed, and here we have got little blunt, little blunt, okay. okay. So the pointed are for incising, that is cutting. Pointed are for incising, and the blunt are for grinding. Incising means cutting. A cut is called incision. A cut is called incision, incision, incision. We have got incisors, the teeth in mammals, incisors. The sharp front teeth are incisors to cut, to cut, incision. Okay, cut is called incision. And incising region, that is to cut. The blunt one is grinding region and mandible help in biting and chewing, incising and grinding, incising and grinding. This is a neat question. This is neat. 2023. So need question and need 2023. You can expect this. So which mouth part has incising and grinding region? Answer is mandible. Which mouth part has incising and grinding region? Answer is mandible. Okay. 
and uh, hypopharynx is the tongue. Now you see these jointed appendages in the maxilla, this one, maxilla, and this is a labium. These are called palp, palp. These are, this is a palp called maxillary palp, and the, this one is a labial palp, labial palp or palp. Once again, this one is labial palp and maxillary palp. Now these palp are sensory tools. Palp are sensory, sensory structures, sensory structures. They help in sensing the food. However, the antennae have a lot of sensors. Even the taste receptors, <clears throat> even the taste receptors are present in the antennae. The taste receptors, the taste receptors are present in the antenna. The taste receptors present in the antenna. Taste receptors. I hope you guys understand that. And a lot of receptors are also in maxilla and labium. So where you find the palp, maxillary palp and labial palp. Well, that is enough, guys. Now, let us move further. Head is enough. And uh, in the morphology, I can describe, already have described on board the uh, thorax. Okay. I have described on board is the thorax part. Okay. So thorax, I think that is. I think uh, because it's a different uh, machine. It is a PC side, and we have done that in the Android side. No problem. Thorax is made up of three segments, prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. In one, there the legs are there. So the prothoracic legs, mesothoracic legs, and metathoracic legs. One pair of legs are there. And then this is a forewing, and this is a hindwing. Forewing are mesothoracic, hindwing are metathoracic wings. They are for flight. They are for flying and they are just for protection. They are protective. Okay. And which one is tagmina? Mesothoracic or metathoracic? Which one is tagmina? Tagmina. Mesothoracic. Very good, Priyanka. Mesothoracic. This one is tagmina. Tagmina. This one is tagmina. The non flight one are tagmina. Also remember, on the lateral side of the, because these are attached, these legs are attached to the lateral side, lateral sclerite. In the abdomen also, the lateral sclerite, it has got many small holes. Remember that these are paired, they are paired. So around eight pairs of holes, three, three, six, seven, eight, eight pairs of holes are there in the abdomen and two pairs of holes are there in the thorax. These 10 pairs of holes, 10 pairs of side holes are called dash. Any idea? What do we call them? They are equivalent to nostrils. They are for inhaling and exhaling the air in and out. Any idea? Yes, they are called spiracles. Yes, they are called spiracles. Believe me, they are a little different from the, the nostril because we cannot close the nostril at will. But this animal, not at will, but this animal, the nostrils can be closed. The nostrils can be closed. How? Remember that there are muscles. There are muscles present. These are the circular muscles. Circular muscles. Circular muscles are there. When these muscles contract, this uh, spiracles become closed. When the muscle relax, spiracle open. So this is a sphincteric muscle, a sphincter. This is a sphincter present. At a given point of time, not all spiracles are open. In a given point of time, the first thoracic and the first abdominal, they are always open. Always open. Now, as the animal is increasing its activity, more and more air is required, more and more uh, energy is required, more air is required, and therefore, more and more spiracles are opening up. But normally, at rest, at rest, these two pairs are opened at rest. So at rest, two pairs, 
the first thoracic and first abdominal just remember two pairs are opened always in fact from you guys rather than asking which one is open which one is closed you should know that as the activity increase it can control the opening and closing of the sparicles that is more important for you guys than to know which one is open when after that abdomen now abdomen is important in some regards abdomen abdomen is important because at the end of the abdomen there is a brood pouch and we have to learn so many things from the brood pouch abdomen number 1 it has got a dash pairs dash pairs of sparicles dash pair of sparicles dash pair of legs dash pair of legs come on what is the answer of first and second come on answer of first is 10 abdomen has got 10 pairs of sparicles good correct answer a is correct now anyone who can say the part b part b of this how many pair of legs are there <laughs> the correct answer is zero no legs are there in the abdomen abdomen does not have any legs remember that only three pairs of legs are there and they are already present some people are writing 1 2 3 better this is abdomen only is sparicles you need to know in the abdomen the dorsal uh, scleroid are tergite so tergite are t1 to t10 present but sternite is this is dorsal but sternite is one lesser so sternite is s1 to s9 sternites are s1 to s9 that is ninth sternum but tergum is up to 10th tergum tergum is up to 10th this this 10th tergum is also sometime asked because this is having a median groove it looks bifid there is a median there is a median groove there is a median groove here it looks bifid bifid this is t10 10th tergum 10th tergum present in both the sexes and this is bifid abdominal segments are same in both males and females and there are 10 segments in abdomen 10 segments in abdomen so number of segments are not different only thing is the shape is such that the number of tergites and sternites are not equal in abdomen tergites are all in one like 1 1 1 each but then the shape is such that that is sternites are up to here because here you have got the brood pouch or genital pouch now the brood pouch is at the rear end here you have the brood pouch or genital pouch genital pouch abdomen rear end we have a brood pouch or genital pouch all of you please understand that the formation of brood pouch is different in males and females that also please remember the formation of brood pouch is different the formation of brood pouch is different in males and females in males and in females in males it is at the hind end of the body with bounded dorsally by so do dorsally by both ninth and tenth terga terga means plural tergum one so both t9 and t10 but here you have got s9 up to the ninth sternum and remember that here you have the anus so anus is a part of the genital pouch in males anus is a part of the genital pouch in males along with the anus there is a gonopore male gonopore this is anus 
डॉर्सली एनस वेंट्रली मेल गोनोपोर गोनोपोर मेल गोनोपोर ऑल अराउंड यू हैव गॉट इरेगुलर काइटिनस प्लेट्स आर देयर all around you have got irregular chitinous plates and these chitinous plates are known as gonapophysis gonapophysis these gonapophysis help in they help in copulation now i'll tell you what is copulation copulation is the act of transfer of male gametes inside the female uh, body act of transfer of male gametes inside the female body is called copulation in this animal the sperm are in the form of packet of sperm you know the same name we have used for earthworm what is the packet of sperm called what is the packet of sperm called come on yes this is called spermatophore very good spermatophore so Uh, copulation is the transfer of spermatophore into the female spermatheci, and uh, this is assisted by gonapophysis. Gonapophysis. So this is the three parts. Remember, in the male uh, genital pouch, let us use the word genital pouch better. Genital pouch. Okay. Brood pouch sometimes better is used to use. brood pouch for females brood pouch now in females let us make pink females in the females the seventh sternum is boat shaped if you see the seventh sternum it looks like a boat once again the seventh sternum is boat shaped seventh sternum now this is boat shaped seventh sternum this is uh, s7 along with s8 and s9 s8 and s9 which are inside all three of them s7 s8 s9 sternum 7 sternum 8 sternum 9 no tergum remember that there is no tergum at all remember that they form the brood pouch or genital pouch this is a boat shaped with i'm saying the boat shaped one the boat shaped they form the brood pouch or genital pouch in this so because the tergum is not there so there is no anus anus is not there no anus here no no i'm not saying anus is not present in female i'm not saying that what i am saying that uh, in the brood pouch or genital pouch anal opening is not there okay So that's the meaning of here why i'm saying no anus no anal opening here in the brood pouch so what all are there please remember them uh, here i tell you what all open in the brood pouch uh goshalites sp college goshalites s p college now this students have made that uh, yes it is funny goshalite is our college name s p for special and c for college so these three things are open <laughs> they are open in the female brood pouch anteriorly there is a female gonopore there is a female gonopore then uh, there is a s p for spermatheal pore spermatheal pore spermatheal pore and co for college and college for collateral collateral gland something you know some students make and it looks so nice that i learn that and i also tell my other students so gonopore that is goshalites sp for special and co for college or coll college okay so gonopore and uh, spermatheal pore and two collateral glands so they are two in number two in number two collateral glands are there in fact their openings are there spermatheal pore one pore to get the sperma spermatophore during copulation and female gonopore from where the eggs are released 
एट द रिलीज एनस फ्रॉम वेयर द फीकल मैटर कम्स आउट गोनोपोर फ्रॉम वेयर द स्पर मैटोफोर कम आउट एंड गोनेपोफाइस ऑल्सो कॉल्ड फेलोमियर्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड फेलोमियर्स फेलोमियर्स बिकॉज दे हेल्प इन कॉपुलेशन फेलस वर्ड इज यूज फॉर पीनस ओके सो दे आर हैविंग द सेम वर्क लाइक अ पीनस बट इट इज नॉट वन स्ट्रक्चर दे आर मेनी देर फॉर फेलोमियर्स फेलोमियर्स ओके आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज सेवेंथ स्टर्नम विच इज बोट शेपेड बोट शेप्ड Boat shaped, seventh sternum is boat shaped. Plus S eight, plus S nine. Form the female brood pouch or genital pouch. Form the female brood pouch or genital pouch. Please learn that. Please learn. In the males, T nine, T ten, S nine. Three of them. In both of them, three three uh, sclerite. So in males, the three sclerites are yes, T nine, T ten, and S nine. and here the three sclerites are yes please s7 s8 and s9 i think you understood this so guys uh, that is about the abdomen morphology of abdomen and uh, here we have done the morphology of the body uh, brood pouch is very important important means uh, students will find problem because they can give you uh, statements of ncert but once you have learned them through this uh, comparison i don't think so you will have any problem right so three three uh, sclerites here in male and three sclerites in female because the dorsal sclerum uh, sclerite is not there making the female brood pouch and that is the reason in the female uh, the anus is not opening because anus is opening out of the brood pouch anus opens out of the brood pouch and not inside the brood pouch inside the brood pouch anteriorly is the female gonopore and then there is a spermatical pore and also the collateral glands just to uh, see them to remember them i can take you to this <coughs> just to take you here i'll go to this one in this picture you can clearly see you can clearly see that this is boat shaped seven star it is a female this side is female and that side is male guys this is female so here we have female female abdomen dorsally and female abdomen ventrally ventrally you can see the sternum this is the seventh sternum boat shaped s8 and s9 are not visible here because they are inside they are making the brood pouch guys let's come to here this is a male male dorsal male ventral same no problem this is t10 and this one is uh, t10 this one and this is s9 s9 dear children please understand that in the males and what are these can you please tell me what are these already labeled this is anal cerci anal cerci anal one is circus two cerci okay these are anal cerci these one present in both male and female but in the males along with s9 this is s9 extending from s9 in the males extending from s9 sternum 9 are these two pin like structures these two pin like structures this one one pin like structure one pin like structure and these are called caudal styles caudal styles they are called caudal styles what else we can call them we can call them anal styles caudal styles or anal styles caudal styles or caudal means the hind part of the uh, uh, trunk is cauda 
Coda actually means anyone who can say what is Coda means? What is the meaning of Coda? Coda. Coda means tail. Okay, guys. Now, please, I have done the, the question, for example, a lot of questions are there. And uh, so in the class, it has to be done in the class, okay? For example, recently we have a question on in the year 2018 also based on this. In the year 2018, based on this caudal style and anal style, okay? For example, this question I'm saying, this one, need 2018, which of the following features is used to identify a male cockroach from a female cockroach? Yes. So everything is same. Only thing is the caudal style. Answer is B, caudal style. So these are the latest question. Now I will share this file to you because already the time is getting over. Uh, either we tell these things very fast or we tell them in a nice way. So now I think you will not forget the uh, male brood pouch or genital pouch and the female genital pouch. I think I have done justice to make you learn that maybe you have more suggestions and you can discuss with me. Already I have given my phone number. So even uh, in the YouTube also people have the phone number. So yes, uh, you can also give me some messages. If you have any doubt, you can also give me some messages. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Take care. And we'll meet on the next one. I think the time is getting over. And we'll meet on the next one. Bye-bye. Take care. I will share this file to you. If not, if not done today, remind me, I will do it 100% today. By end of the day, I will share this file. Okay, today's class. Already we have a beta auto that page is gone there. And here, I think we have a share. We can share this one. Yes. So this one, you can do that.